Now that we know what ASP is and the difference between client-side and server-side scripts, let's go ahead and build our first ASP script. This will be a good test to make sure that your web server supports ASP. I'm going to begin by loading up my web editor. I'm using Microsoft Front Page 2003. Again, you can use any web page editor of your choice. Once Front Page opens up, I'm going to go to File and then Open Site. Now the website that I use for my classes, my HTML classes, my Front Page classes, and my ASP classes, is a special domain. It's www.pcresale.net. It's a fake website for selling used computers. So I'm going to type in http colon slash slash www.pcresale.net and then click on open. Now I'll enter in my username and password and of course I'm not telling you what those are. You'll have your own given to you by our internet provider. And here I am inside of my web, my pcresale.net web. Now, you'll see a bunch of other pages in here already, some HTML pages. These are pages that I created in my front page class, and we can ignore those today. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a new folder just for my ASP 101 class. So I'm going to right-click here on the root of the web and come over here to New, and then come down to Folder, and then click on Folder. My new folder appears down here. And I'm going to type in the name ASP 101 for my ASP 101 class, and then I'll press Enter. Now I can put any pages that I want inside of here. And you'll see there's basic HTM pages in here. There's also some other ASP pages I have, because I have taught other ASP classes and seminars, and we'll see some of these a little bit later today. And again, it doesn't matter what web page editor you're using, as long as you know how to work with these files and create your own folders and things of that nature. If not, again, I strongly recommend you take my HTML 101 class or my Front Page 101 class, depending on what web page editor you're using. Now, let's create a new blank page in this new folder that we can use for our class here. I'm going to right-click on the folder, come over to New, and then Blank Page. Now, front page creates me a new blank page here, and it's called new underscore page underscore one dot htm. But I don't want an HTML page. I want an ASP page. Now, ASP pages should all end with the extension ASP. That tells the server, hey, look at this page first before you send it down to the web browser. If the extension is HTM or HTML, the web server doesn't do anything. It just sends the whole page down. So you have to make sure that all of your ASP pages end in .asp. Now, I'm going to call this guy default.asp. That's the name for this particular file. All right, it's all set, it's still blank, but now I have a default.asp. Why did I call it default.asp? Default is the name that ASP likes to see for the default page in the folder. In other words, if I just type in pcresale.net slash ASP101, the web server knows to send the default.asp page. It's just like the index.html page or the index.htm. It's the default file for that folder. So if you don't specify a file name, you get the default.asp page. Now, let's open it up so we can do some stuff. I'm going to double-click on it. And here we are. You can see I'm in a blank new page. Now, let's go to the HTML code for this page. In front page, I'll come down here and click on the code tab. If you have an older version of front page, it might see HTML tab down here. But this is the HTML code behind my page. Now, this is all stuff that front page threw in there automatically for me. Right, I've got my HTML tags. I've got my header section, my body section. Okay. For the purposes of today's class, I am going to delete the header section. I'm just going to get rid of it because we don't need it for right now. So what I'm left with is my HTML and my body section. All right, that's all we're going to work with right now. Let's type in some normal text in here, right? Like, hello there, period. Okay, and if I come back down here and click on design to see the normal view, 
there I have my hello there. Okay, nothing fancy so far. And of course, if I want to bold this, I can simply put that inside of the bold tags, right? B and the slash B. And again, if you don't know those, you should take my HTML 101 course. Okay, that's some basic bolding. And I'll get rid of those. That was just a little review. Now, let's talk about some ASP. Right after hello there, I want to say the time is, and I want to put the time right here. Okay? Now, I can't do that with just HTML. For that, I'm going to need some ASP. Now, every ASP command has to be enclosed inside of a couple of tags. The open ASP tag looks like this. Okay, it's the less than symbol followed by a percent sign. The close tag is backwards. It's percent and then the greater than symbol. So everything that goes in between there is going to be compiled by the processor before the information is sent out of the web browser. Now, what do I want to put inside of here? Well, for right now, I want to put just the current time. And we can do that by saying equals the word time and then open and close parentheses. And that will say, take the current time, whatever the time is on the server, and insert it right here. And I'll just get rid of those empty spaces. That's the time function. Now, let's save our page. I'll hit Control S on my keyboard to save my page. Or you can click on File, Save, or the Save button, however you want to save your page. Let's take a look at it in design mode. And, oh, wait a minute, I'm not seeing anything. What's going on here? Well, front page, or whatever your web page editor is, most likely cannot display that because it has to be compiled at the server. So you're not going to be able to see your ASP scripts live unless you look at them through your web browser. How do I do that? Well, you can go to the web and go to www.pcresale.net slash ASP101 slash default.asp. That's the way you can see how this page is going to look. Front page has a single button you can click on to preview this in your Internet Explorer browser. And after I click on it, Internet Explorer pops up, takes me right to the web, and there's my page. It says, hello there, the time is 3.20, 3.30 p.m. That's because what happened here? Well, here's my code. I've got hello there, the time is, then the server saw this thing. What does this thing mean? Well, everything between those two ASP tags gets compiled. It saw the time function, so it replaced this with the current time. And what did I get as a result? This is sent down to my browser. All right, let's take a look at the source code. View, and then source, right inside my web browser here. Okay, and now Notepad pops up. This is my basic Notepad text editor. Here's my HTML, my body, my hello there, and look, there's no ASP tags in here. This is exactly what got sent down to the browser because the server compiled the script and sent down the text to the web browser. And that basically is how a server-side script like ASP works. Now, this is the test to make sure that ASP is working on your site. If not, if you don't see the time here, then ASP is not enabled on your website. Now, if you see the wrong time there, perhaps you are getting a time, but it's not the right time, it's not right now, that's okay. Your server, your web server, might simply be set to the wrong time. Right, it's got a basic clock, just like your computer does. You might just need to reset the server time. If it's your own server, that's not a problem. If you're having your website hosted by someone else, then contact your internet provider and tell them, hey, my server clock is wrong. If you have a server that's hosted in a different part of the world, perhaps if you're in New York and your server's in California, you're going to see the local time to whatever your server is set for. But if you have no time here at all, then that means that your site will not display ASP. Now, the first thing you should do, if you don't have the time there, if ASP isn't supported, is to contact your internet service provider and say, hey, I need support for ASP. Most of the time, 
they can either set it up for you or recommend what you need to do to set it up. You might have to pay a little more because a lot of internet providers that are using Linux or some other basic web server program might not be able to set up ASP for you without an additional charge. If your internet provider says they can't give you ASP scripting, then simply come over to our website, ASPLearningZone.com slash web hosting, and we have a list of other providers there that will provide you with web server service that supports ASP. We do not offer web hosting ourselves. We're simply a training company, but I do have a list of other internet providers that I recommend that can host your website at a good price. All right, so back to our web here. Now, I'm going to leave Internet Explorer open and just click back over here on front page. This way, I don't have to keep reloading my page in Internet Explorer each time I want to see an update. For example, let's come down here. Instead of the current time, how about the current date, right? D-A-T-E. Let's see that. Now, save my page. So either click on the Save button or hit Control-S. And instead of hitting this button again, all I have to do is go down to my taskbar and just flip back over to my website and hit the refresh button. All right, when I hit my refresh button, now it's updated with the current date. And of course, I didn't change the text over here. It still says the word time. That's easy to fix too. The date is, right, save it, control S, flip back over. You can use alt tab on your keyboard too, right? Alt tab to flip back over, refresh, and now it says the date is, and there we go. That is how a basic ASP script works. You have your HTML. You have your ASP code inside of those little tags. The server processes the page for you and sends the browser the text.